Welcome to the Leader Impact Podcast. We are a community of leaders with a network in over 350 cities around the world dedicated to optimizing our personal, professional, and spiritual lives to have impact. This show is where we have a chance to listen and engage with leaders who are living this out. We love talking with leaders, so if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions to make the show even better, please let us know. Best way to stay connected in Canada is through our newsletter at leaderimpact.ca or on social media at Leader Impact. If you're listening from outside of Canada, check out our website at leaderimpact.com. I'm your host, Lisa Peters, and our guest today is Sean Mooney. Sean lives in Johannesburg, South Africa. He's been married for 35 years, and they have three children on their own and two boys that they've adopted. Sean completed degrees in science, a master's in business, and a B-admin in ministry. He has worked for a number of blue chip companies such as Coca-Cola, Nampak, as well as the subsidiaries of Anglo-American and Exaro, as well as Impala Bafong King. He has vast experience in manufacturing and supply chain, as well as in the entrepreneurial sector, having owned businesses in the restaurant industry, as well as a supermarket of an import business, frozen food. He is currently focusing on expanding his property rental business and also owns a growing aquaponics business. Sean is also a volunteer pastor in his church and serves as a chairman on the board of the Wycliffe South Africa, as well as on the Leader Impact Global Council. For leisure, Sean does ultra marathon running and has completed nine comrades marathons. He is also a keen golfer. Welcome to the show, Sean. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. An ultra marathoner. (laughs) <laughs> I I have done, I think a marathon is 42.2 kilometers. How long That's is an right. ultra? An ultra, look, uh, they, they start from about 50 kilometers. Uh, the one that I mentioned in my profile yeah. uh, is, uh, is a comrades marathon, uh, which, in, yeah. uh, which is actually about 87 kilometers. So that gives you an idea. It's, 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 wow. it's nearly two marathons. It's a little bit more than two marathons. <laughs> and you run this all at once? You run that all at once, yeah. So, How long does that take you? Uh, the good runners uh, will complete it within, I'm talking about the guys that will normally win the race. They'll only finish it in about five and a half hours, which is like amazing to run that kind of distance. I think for me, that's a, a, a serious novice. Uh, it would it would probably take about anything between 11 to 12 hours of running. So it's a long day. <laughs> Wow. I uh, I have done marathons. I ran them in 4.30. So oh, that's really good. those guys are almost done ultra marathons. And I'm still running one. Absolutely. Well, congratulations. Thank those you. are, those yes, are big, big training uh, goals. Thank you. So first off, thank you for, join, for joining us. It is an early morning for me, a later in the afternoon for you. But uh, it is it is just an honor to have you here, Sean. So thank yes, you for joining us. You, Lisa. Yeah. So we are, um, we're always looking for a bit of your professional story. We talked a little bit about it and I, I giggle as we go from, I think, mining industries to restaurant, but I'm sure you'll say more, but um, <laughs> we're looking for a bit of your professional story and how you got to where you are today. Okay. And it's really about just giving a couple snapshots that were kind of those pivotal turning points along your journey. Yeah, sure. So I'll, I'll give you a, a brief intro to um, a little bit of my life and my professional journey. And, and I guess it, it, when I think about my, the start of my life, I was born into a fairly poor family, Lisa. Um, my dad was a printer by profession. My mom, just a, a clerical worker. Uh, and I think what made things a little bit more difficult was that they, uh, they were divorced uh, while I was still quite young. I think I was about 10 years old when they got divorced. And this, this was quite traumatic for, for us as a family. We were, I have two other siblings. Uh, my mom died fairly young, and I think that was for from depression. Uh, she died at the age of 48, and, and it was as a result of the divorce. So that was quite devastating for us as a family. Um, I remember growing up being shunted from one home to the other after my parents divorced. I also remember growing up for a while in a home that had no water, no running water, no taps, <laughs> uh, no electricity. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was, that was interesting for, uh, for a few years in my life. But, um, I think what, what helped me despite my parents' divorce is that my parents still cared for me and as well as my siblings as best as they could. I think what helped me, uh, however, is that I was a fairly industrious and reasonably bright student, um, at school. 
and also university. I'm just saying reasonably bright, not brilliant, uh, <laughs> because I had hopes of becoming a medical doctor, uh, but my grades were not were not good enough for that. So I had to consider other other mm-hmm. career options. Um, I then qualified with a BSc degree in maths and chemistry. I did a, a higher diploma in education, a master's degree, and then also in my last few years, a bachelor's degree in, in, in ministry. Um, I've been blessed to work for and obtain fairly senior positions within uh, blue chip companies in the FMCG sector. And I think you've mentioned that in the introduction, companies such as Coca-Cola and Anglo-American. Uh, and during the last few years, um, I was within the supply chain space. I was the most senior person in the supply chain space as the group supply chain manager, which in in other organizations would be your chief procurement officer um, or chief supply chain officer uh, within the organization. But despite uh, the corporate world, I think during these days within the corporate world, I've also ventured uh, into the entrepreneurial space. And um, and so I've been an entrepreneur. I've owned a, a restaurant, supermarket, a frozen food, import business. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I've really tried uh, tried the, the entrepreneurial route, but it, it, I guess at some point uh, some of those businesses failed. Uh, some of them have still been still I've still still own them, which has been which has been a blessing. Uh, I'm currently expanding my property uh, rental portfolio uh, business, and I currently lease out about twenty five rental units. So that's a good source of passive income for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm the director of a, 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 a aquaponics company called My Aquaponics, and so we're a hydroponics and aquaponics supply company, and we also do training for anyone that's interested in venturing into uh, aquaponics or hydroponics. Um, I know that I'm getting a little bit old, but I don't feel that I'm ready to retire as yet. Um, so um, I might still do some work in uh, from a consulting perspective. Uh, in the enterprise and supply development space to the mining sector. And this would be with a fairly large, one of the largest uh, property uh, development companies in our country, a company called Growth Point. Um, so uh, we, we, we're still in discussions about that possibility for now. So that just gives you a slight snapshot of my, mm-hmm. my, my uh, professional career. Yeah, that is a lot of pivotal moments in, in completely different career yeah. <laughs> at, at any point, did you so when when you're transitioning, and I and I think of many people who've listened throughout, uh, or who are listening, and throughout COVID, there was a lot of transition for people. Either they transitioned out, retired, or had to transition within. Um, were you ever? What was that? What was that feeling of moving from mining to restaurant to rental to hydroponics? Like that's that's big. <laughs> the moments that you're transitioning. Uh, it's, it's quite interesting. Uh, I've, I've actually found uh, the longest stint that I had within the mining sector. I worked for 12 years with one of Anglo-American subsidiaries, um, uh, Kumba Iron Ore and Exaro. Um, but even within those 12 years, for some reason, I, I seem to, every three years, it's, it's kind of been a pattern in my life. Uh, for every three years, I seem to transition to something new. <laughs> Um, uh, so yeah, um, it was at Exaro, you know, I, I had done really well at Exaro, um, really done well. And I felt that I wanted to transition into possibly owning some my, my own businesses. Mm-hmm. And that's when I ventured into, I left Exaro, um, and, uh, started venturing into the entrepreneurial space. And as I said, you know, uh, some of some of those ventures really did well. Uh, the property, the property uh, business uh, is is really is is, is flourishing. Um, but then some of them uh, failed. You know, the frozen food, vegetable that was a tough uh, space to move into, uh, and I had to I had to stop some of that. So yeah, I have certainly tried to uh, <laughs> t- uh, tried my hand at uh, at at various uh, various opportunities. Yeah. Well, I know uh, one of our questions is about, you know, how much we learn from our failures and mistakes. But before we get there, um, I'm going to talk to you about the best principle of success. I mean, I wonder if you if you have one and if you can tell us a story that uh, um, illustrates that. 
Sure, sure, Lisa. I think for me, success, and, and I had to think really long and hard about this, you know. Um, but for me, success means leaving a lasting impact uh, in the lives of those around me. I think that for me is successful. And then, and defining what the lasting impact means, I guess, would vary from, uh, from, from different people's understanding. But for me, uh, that lasting impact needs to start with my immediate family. So if I'm not, if I'm not a success at home um, and I am successful in business or in, within the corporate sector, uh, but my home falls apart. That would be a, that would be a disaster. So for me, um, having a fairly large family uh, with at various ages, including the adopted kids that we had, uh, trying to be a good parent, a good father, uh, and and really uh, you know bring them up well for me was is really important. But it extends beyond your immediate family. For me, success also means being able to make a positive impact. In, in your work environment, within your community, and also even within the church environment. Um, so uh, just, an, just an, a little bit of an example within the work environment. I've always felt, the, I felt a sense of achievement when I, when I, when I could see people growing uh, within the organization, uh, developing themselves, studying, uh, getting higher degrees, um, and moving on, you know, from one position to the other. I recall in my last organization that it was very difficult uh, due to financial constraints, very difficult for people to, to do further studies. And I tried to eliminate some of those stumbling blocks uh, by, make, by just opening the doors. Let, let as many of my staff, if they ever desire to study, Let's see if we could open those doors. And it was such a delight to see uh, a few of them, you know, complete their degrees, successfully move on to better positions. Uh, I, I recall in my last organization, the, my 2IC who, who reported to me, who was a direct report, uh, a subordinate to me, um, I helped him complete his executive management diploma um, after many years of not studying. Um, and it was something that that he always thought about doing, um, and 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 I think it was it really opened up some doors for him. You know, he was eventually appointed into my position uh, when I left the organization. Uh, so so for me that was that that also, you know, is a is a signifies just a, a feeling of achievement. But more than just uh, him moving within his career, I think I I tried to have some spiritual conversations with him during this period. And uh, that also led to him eventually becoming a believer. Um, and, and, and so for me, success is, is just seeing people grow in, in, in all aspects of their lives, not only professionally, but, but spiritually as well. Yeah. Listening to you um, and then knowing a little bit about uh, just welcoming into your house two adopted boys, making a difference in their life, making that impact. Um, uh, and, you know, just talking about people growing, you've definitely lived that out. Your principal success is definitely lived out in your personal professionalism. And thank spirit. you. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that story. Thank you. So I want to go back to a little bit about failures, um, fail, failings and mistakes. And you talked about you entered the frozen food world and it didn't work. And yeah. <laughs> you just kept moving on. So. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, we, we know that failings and mistakes, those, those can be our successes. So if you'd share one of your greatest failings yeah, or mistakes sure. and, and what you learned from it. Sure, sure. Not a problem. You know, as I said, I, I mean, I've had some failed businesses, especially within the entrepreneurial space. Uh, I guess I've, I've moved better within the corporate environment uh, and progressed uh, faster. Um, but certainly had some some failures within the within the entrepreneurial space. Um, I, I I recall losing, uh, especially within the frozen food business. I mean, I lost a couple of million rand trying to establish that that business. So uh, some hard lessons that I've learned and and money that could have been utilized well elsewhere. <laughs> But there's a, there's a few lessons um, that I've learned from this uh, that I'd like to share, Lisa. The one is um, 
you know, first of all, seek counsel uh, with other trusted persons before making any life-changing decisions. You know, even if you think that uh, you honor you honor good, this is a good opportunity. Seek counsel before jumping into it. The second key lesson for me is do not make any hasty or pressurized investment decisions. Uh, uh, you've got to make sure that you have peace in your heart uh, before before making that investment decision. Uh, the third point for me or third lesson for me was choose your partners very carefully. Uh, do not just do not just partner with anyone in in a business venture. Uh, it could be fairly harmful uh, on in in the long term. Uh, and I, and I think I mentioned earlier make make sure that you've got peace in your heart before making these major decisions. Any anxiety that you might experience is normally an indication that that business opportunity is not going to be the right one for you. Uh, another thing is sometimes we don't listen carefully enough to our spouses. <laughs> so make sure that you and your spouse are in unity about the decision that you need to make. Um, don't don't bulldoze your wife or husband uh, when, when needing to make a key decision. And then finally, make sure that you spend time in prayer. You need to see guidance from God uh, in the decision that you need to make. Um, and uh, don't really not don't be hasty in, uh, in 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 jumping into any opportunity that you find. Yeah, Sean, when you first said seek counsel, my mind went right to the highest counsel. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I and I know you meant you know seek counsel of the the people around you, like the the smartest you know the smartest people. The um, and then you you had talked about time and prayer, and then I also laughed when you said choose your partner. Because that could your partner in life, your partner in business, your like oh, your partners. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Who you surround yourself with, uh, but mm. yeah, you, you need. We need to be talking more about what we're doing versus keeping it in. I think sometimes we think we're alone as leaders at the top. We we don't want to talk. We don't want to admit we don't know the answers. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. Um, so it's it's good to hear. It's it's always good to hear people who have lost millions to say that like these are, these are still smart decisions and I have won and I have lost yeah. and I, I will still go back to these principles, you Absolutely. know? Yeah. So it is always interesting to interview uh, people like yourself, Sean, who are from a different country than myself. And uh, we want to ask you the question about what makes a great leader in your country. And do you feel this is in, unique to you, to your country? I think uh, we've been privileged uh, by having a, a leader uh, in the form of Nelson Mandela, um, who was our first democratically elected president. Um, mm -hmm. uh, for me, that he really stands out as a as a great leader. And what what I admired, what I personally admired about him, uh, Lisa, is that despite being imprisoned for for more than twenty years for a cause that he believed in, you know, he emerged from prison. Uh, took up office um, at the highest level in our country, but with no bitterness or hatred uh, for the years that he had lost. Uh, instead, he tried to unite the people in our country. Um, he demonstrated forgiveness uh, and sacrifice, uh, personal sacrifice, and also understood the bigger picture of rescuing our nation from the brink of a civil war, you know. Uh, many many countries that have gone through a transition like this would would have certainly experienced major civil war uh, in 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 the change of power. Uh, but we we really have been blessed to 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 have a leader like Nelson Mandela, mm -hmm. uh, who uh, who was able to make this transition not easy, but still uh, free from war, if I can call it that. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think this is unique to our country, but it certainly uh, demonstrates some of the characteristics that I see in great leadership. Yeah. Nelson Mandela, Nelson Mandela is a great example. And I, I think when I think of him, I think of 27 years in jail mm. and to come out and, and then being elected the first president mm. of South Africa. Um, where, how do, how do you let go of that anger, right? That, Absolutely. Um, 
we had a conversation uh, weeks ago about joy in my in my care group and talked about like, what what brings you joy and mm. in times of such trials how do you find that joy sure you know and nelson it, it wasn't on earth that joy for nelson yeah yeah you know he he found a bigger joy absolutely and he, and he stuck to it absolutely you know so that is a great example um so you've been involved with leader impact as your um bio or as your introduction had said you are on the global <laughs> council yes so at leader impact you know we want to grow personally professionally and spiritually uh, to increase impact. So mm-hmm. the question is, would you be willing to share an example of how the spiritual makes a practical impact in your life as a leader? Absolutely. I think for me, um, growing spiritually in my relationship with God and our Lord Jesus Christ has had a major impact for me in my life as a leader. Uh, in some instances, it has meant that I had to forego certain career opportunities Mm-hmm. Uh, by not being willing to play the political game uh, within the corporate world. In other instances, it sometimes has meant that I've not been as popular, <laughs> um, you know, as being one of the guys or being in the in crowd uh, due to not willing to compromise my integrity or living contrary to the principles in the Bible. So so, so those were, these were some of the sacrifices I think that one has to go through within the corporate environment uh, should, you, should you wish to live a spiritual life. Mm-hmm. Um, my relationship with God has definitely been, for me, a firm foundation. Uh, it's kept me stable in so many situations uh, that I've had to go through. I mean, I've, I've mentioned some of my failures. You know, I've made some wrong investment decisions and in some instances even made some uh, some poor c- career decisions. Uh, but despite making some of these decisions, um, my experience has been that God has just been faithful in guiding me and helping me through those difficult situations, you know, as a, as a father would help his child, <laughs> um, even when that child does go amiss or astray, uh, is there to, to give you that helping hand and not, 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 uh, not allow you to drown uh, in in the mistakes that you've made. So I've I've learned as well the importance uh, of not compartmentalizing your life by, for example, separating your professional life from your spiritual life because you can so easily do that. Um, so I say that you know what I go to church on a Sunday, uh, but for the rest of the week this is I, I'm I'm leading and living a different life. So before becoming involved with Leader Impact, I never understood that importance of saying that I need to live an integrated life. Uh, I need to be able to be a... I need to understand that my workplace is also my mission field in a sense. I need to be able to positively impact the lives of people within the work environment. And uh, so I began to understand that, that the importance of that. And for me, it started off by just praying. Uh, just praying for people in my organization and uh, and then later on being bold enough to even have some spiritual conversations with them. And I know it's not easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you, you need to be bold to do that. Uh, in my last organization, um, uh, and that organization is a large one, we employed over 9,000 employees uh, within, within, that, within the mining group. Um, I was able to share the gospel with two really senior executives in the organization, the CEO of the organization, as well as the COO, uh, the chief operating officer. Um, and, uh, and I'm really trusting that the conversations that I've had with them while I was there uh, would have landed, would have, would have had an impact on their lives. So, yeah, always think about opportunities to to influence people that you meet uh, from a spiritual perspective as well. Yeah. I have to ask you, um, when you're in a crisis, in a, in a moment of a business decision that didn't go as well, mm-hmm. are you, are, I can't imagine, are you calm? Like when I, when I think of when some, it's easy to look if my point is it's easy to look back and go, you know what? I, I, we knew it was going to happen. God had a plan. But when you are in it, it is yeah. so hard. 
And I, I Sean, I've never lost millions. I, you know, <laughs> my investments are not like that. And, you know, and I have that this will be okay. You know, this will be okay. But there are big decisions. And, and sometimes when we're in them, it's so hard to find yeah. where is God in this? And, yeah. and maybe, I, I don't know. I ask yeah, that because I think people listening are, are still trying to find, like, where is he in the bad times? Oh, that's such a, <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a long conversation one could have, Lisa. Yeah. Of, uh, when things go wrong in your life, you know, uh, yeah. when the decisions you've made do not go as you'd planned or, or when, or, or even uh, in some instances, uh, and I wish we had more time, but in some instances, you actually you actually living a life of integrity, and you're living you, you're doing all of the right things, and you're still are faced with a major setback in your life. You know, um, uh, so so these can be tough moments. You know, and I, I've, phew, I think uh, if I were to relate how uh, how God just kind of sustains you uh, through mm-hmm. those through those times how he uh, still provides for for me and my family how he uh, and and it's 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 really like a miracle in some instances you know yeah. uh that that you are able to still successfully emerge from from trials like that but uh, for me there was just two things the one is never lose your faith uh never lose your faith in him and never never stop believing that he's a good father and and has a good plan for your life but the second thing is is also never stop serving others. Mm-hmm. Uh, never stop doing good towards others, um, because he is a rewarder of those who try to sow into the lives of others. So, so, so that has been my ex- my experience, Lisa. Yeah, and I I go right back to your principles of success, and you talked about you know seek counsel and choose your partners and. I mean, surrounding yourself with the people that can help you make decisions mm. and, and get you through any hard times. So thank you for entertaining that question. Oh, no <laughs> Sometimes problem. I think, I, yeah. Um, all right. Well, our last question is about uh, lasting impact. So of course we're dedicated to having a lasting impact at leader impact as you continue to move through your own journey. I was wondering, have you considered what you want your legacy to be when you leave this world? Yeah. <laughs> I think the legacy that I'd like to leave, um, Lisa, is my hope is that I've influenced my, my and this is, I know it's an, a big ambitious goal, but is to be able to have influenced thousands of people for the sake of the kingdom of God. Uh, and my hope is that many of them that I've influenced over my lifetime uh, would one day be with me in heaven. Uh, so so that is, that's the sort of legacy that I'd like to leave. And my involvement with Leader Impact, uh, and the reason why I remain involved with Leader Impact is because I understand, I understand the 80-20 principle, which, which means that if I can influence the top 20% of influential leaders in organizations, if I can influence the CEO or the COO of an organization, he in turn, they in turn can influence thousands of, organ, of people, you know. Uh, and so that that's my hope, Lisa. My hope is that uh, by touching the lives of others, that one day, one day, uh, I will enjoy their company in heaven. That's my that's my Aww. desire. Thank you, Sean. Um, I think of uh, we are we are all part of someone's journey. If we're at the beginning of someone's faith journey, or if we are halfway through, we we are all part of someone's journey, and. Uh, so thank you for being part of someone's journey today. Someone is listening and, you know, maybe just wants to step up a little bit. And so every part of your story is important. Thank you, Sean. Pleasure. So if anyone, uh, this brings us to the end of our podcast, but if anyone wants to look you up, find out more about you, maybe follow up on something you said, interested in talking to you, where can they find you? I'm, I'm, I am on LinkedIn, uh, Lisa, so it's fairly easy to just search for me on LinkedIn. You, you'll find my profile there. Um, I'm, on, I'm on Facebook as well. All right. Uh, and uh, if any, I mean, more than welcome to also just pass through an email uh, if somebody would like to get hold of me as well. But I guess LinkedIn might be the easiest. Yeah. 
isn't it cr- technology? We can just talk to people around the world with a little click and a little video, and it's lovely. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Sean, for taking the last half hour with us. We appreciate all your words and uh, just your time with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Lisa, and all the best for you as well. Thank you. Great. Well, this <laughs> this brings us to the end of our podcast. Uh, if you're part of Leader Impact, you can always discuss or share this podcast with your group. And if you're not yet part of the Leader Impact and would like to find out more and grow your leadership, find our podcast page on our website at leaderimpact.ca and check out our free leadership assessment. You'll also find on our webpage, chapter one of Braden Douglas's book, Becoming a Leader of Impact. You can also check out our groups available in Canada at leaderimpact.ca or if you're listening from anywhere else in the world, check out leaderimpact.com or get in touch with us by email, info at leaderimpact.ca and we will connect you. And if you like this podcast, please leave us a comment, give us a rating or review. This will help other global leaders find our podcast. Thank you for engaging with us. And remember, impact starts with you.